welcome you to the Guinness International Champions Cup. It's the seventh place game between Inter Milan and Juventus from Sun Life Stadium in Miami, Florida. Time to bring you the starting lineups for both teams. Are brought to you by Guinness Black Lager. The JP seven changes from uh, their game against LA Galaxy for Juventus. This looks very much what might be their starting lineup. Besides maybe Bazzarli and in the back position there. You can see a very strong lineup with Pirlo and Vidal, Marquisio. Really, really tough uh, midfield that can pass the ball and penetrate with Tevez up top. And then going over to Inter, you got Handanovic. Uh, been very busy in this tournament, but has made some good saves. Campagnaro back in from his red card. Renocchio and Jesus right back in there trying to solidify what's been a pretty leaky back line. But Barrino and Palacios, those two guys need to step up for this game. Is your captain, Cambiasso. Pirlo will be the orchestrator of things in the midfield, and Hilario Grajeda for Major League Soccer is tonight's man in the middle. Inter will be in the black and blue, Juventus black and white stripes. Seventh place game officially underway between two longtime Italian rivals who thought they'd be playing for certainly a higher position. Cambiasso lets it go back to Jesus, now to Renocchia. See how Inter goes tonight. They've struggled on both sides of the ball, Brian. Yet to score a goal. Yet to score a goal. And really no continuity. I think the rhythm hasn't been there. We talked a little bit about in the, pre the pre-match about how the lines have been so spread out. But it, you can tell that we are definitely going to stick with this back three. And, and trying to work through it. you got Campagnaro who played for Napoli and Mazzari last year. So he definitely will have that understanding. 19 of the ball is Bonucci. who will play it to the left side. Chiellini. Three-time Serie A Defender of the Year will find Bonucci. Both teams pretty comfortable, it seems like, with three in the back. Yeah, I think you've seen Juventus. I mean, they're, they're the best in the world at this. And uh, Napoli was very good, very organized, and they were able to catch teams on the break more, as where Juventus can do it either way. I mean, you've got a player like Pirlo who can pass the ball out of any tight spot. And, well, he's, he's made a few mistakes in this tournament, you know, being preseason, but... Uh, you have the, the opportunity to, to play out different options. And here you see the foul, just Ucinic getting a little too close to Campagnaro and getting a piece of him. First time these two clubs have met in a match outside of Italy. This one goes over everyone. Back to Buffon. He's been on four Italian World Cup rosters. Asamoa pushing it back for Chiellini. Higher pressure now from Inter. It includes Palacio and Alvarez. The phone goes to the opposite side. Casades, number four. Uruguayan International. Chiellini. Keeping it on the ground. Knocked away by Cambiasso to Palacio. Cambiasso strikes, moves it ahead. Runners are there in support, including Kuzmanovic. It's the third back. Up there, and that's the second foul on Vucinic. He's going to get spoken to, at least, from a distance from Rajeda. It wasn't much into that. It was just more of a hit sort of into it. But I know it, he's trying to make sure he keeps control of this game pretty quickly. But you can see these teams, that I think, will be happy with the slower pace. Definitely touched on the, the heat and the humidity and how that drains you. But and also, both coaches have talked how they've worked their team extremely hard and how physically tired they are. Good switch there from Alvarez. It's brought down on the flank, then the cross inside. It was there. Among those players, Freddie Guarín, the Colombian international, to try to get on the end of it. This hurts. This times us. It's, it's, it's like he gets feet caught up underneath him, and he can't take a step to it. It goes right over the top ball out wide here. And, Serves a very nice ball in, but you think he's got a just misjudge it. The ball bends right over the top of him, and if Freddy Boleyn had committed earlier, he would have been able to get on it, and unfortunately, Palacios couldn't keep it on frame. Virginia tries to get around his man, Renokia. He's committed another foul. Asamoa. Pirlo. Jennifer Tevez. Anxious to see during the regular season, not so much tonight, how Pirlo and Tevez combine. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? Because the fact that Tevez makes these great runs, his awareness to get the ball to feed has always been very good. But he also loves to get in those gaps in between defenders and the timing that will come in the regular season. But the, you know both, one with Pirlo being able to pick a ball out of anywhere, and then the quality runs that Tevez brings. All the way back for Chiellini. We'll play it to Casades. Pushing it wide to the right side of the field. 
one there that's closed down quickly. Alvarez, though, couldn't. Great awareness by Kirilo. Great awareness by Kirilo. He knows Alvarez is pinching in. He's got come. It's cut off. Now it's Alvarez. Took a little tug there. Good hustle, but the foul is going to be called. Probably also getting tight on the backside. Needed to have that awareness in here, Chiellini. He is a defender that will always let you know he's there. An arm, a foot, chipping. He's got tons of energy. Gets up and down. And for a big man, he goes down pretty easy himself. Looks like an international Jesus playing it to the left. Herrera was looking for Palacio. He's their best returning goal scorer, 12 during last season, 22 in all competitions. And there's been glimpses of it in this tournament. He loves to, uh, I think his best, he's at his best when he's running onto balls into space. He doesn't mind showing for balls, but a lot like what I was talking about with Tevis. To the middle, Alvarez trying to get it. Brought down, quick shot, and Buffon makes it look easy. Freddy Guarín's in a great spot there. Pirlo does just enough to sort of put him off because we've seen Freddy Guarín just be able to time balls and volleys perfectly. Just didn't get all of it. Ends up being an easy save for Buffon. Chiellini moving it ahead. That's Marquisio. That deflects over to Juan Jesus. Open on the left is Pereira. Had it blocked out. And it will be thrown. Knocked out by Licksteiner. Throwing for Inter Milan. Lost two to nothing in their first match against Chelsea, then got pounded by Valencia four to nothing on Sunday, and it probably could have been worse in terms of the scoreline. Yeah, well, Valencia looks so sharp, especially their interchanging passes and tight spaces. With when Jonas came in, they were just so impressive. It's Vidal turning it upfield, got the return pass. Far flank kept moving by Juventus. They try to get some numbers forward. Here, look. Chiellini. This is Marquisio. Has that some more if he wants him to go into the middle instead. Vucinic is clipped. Play continues, and now they're going to bring it back. Well, Vucinic does so well. He knows that he's going to get sort of barred into the back, so he sets himself quite early and then. Has a feet to shuffles his defender and gets the foul. You can see Antonio Conte there. He was pretty excited and visibly upset about uh, the last loss, but kept it very positive in the press conference. On the turn, Vucinic was going up for a corner. It's high and wide. Ten goals last year. Tied for being the top goal scorer on the club. Ten goals, not a lot, certainly in Syria. Tebez, by accident, will get a lot more than that. <laughs> well, accident. I think mean, Juventus, the way they're set up, Vucinic, he loves to, to get balls to feet, and he only needs a yard of space. He's not the typical forward that could run into to spaces behind, and that's why when we saw Tebez and Vucinic play together in the first game, they had that good combination play because they, they make opposite runs. Steiner's pass in, Vidal, Vucinic, back for Pirlo, sliding to the left for Chiellini, way up from his left back position, fires it well wide with the goalkeeper Handanovic. Venturous shot, but shot, but it's bouncing up, and he thinks it's going to sit up nicely. He actually just comes across it too much, hits it with the outside of his foot, and sort of slices it high and wide. And that eventually will put it back into play. These two teams rank one and two in all time. Syria A wins, and during the pregame show, the guy showed you how many titles they've won between them 47. It's incredible. And just winning the last two. Inter has been struggling their worst season since 1994. Could be worse this year, unless they maybe get some reinforcements or unless this system takes effect and they play better than we think they might. It's going to take time. You know, I know the personnel, they're, they're talking about outside investment, foreign investment, to be able to go out and buy the world-class players that they have been able to buy lately. So important. But for me, they, they were looking strong up until they, they got knocked out of Europa League. And then they just fell. Kept dropping and dropping, couldn't find a win. 
Nice to mow off. Well, that cross, and Handanovic punched it away. Licksteiner will pick it up on the right. Try to cross it to Bucinic. Be a throw in instead for Juventus. Vidal. Clipped. Another free kick for Juventus. That's more like what we're used to seeing from Vidal. And here you can see the cross from Massimo. It's more of a cross shot, but Tevez wasn't ready for it to come in. Didn't make that near post run. I'm not sure anybody would have gotten on the end of it anyways, but Vendanovic being smart and just knocking it out wide. One of the best free kick takers in all of the world, Andrea Pirlo, over the ball. Five goals, seven assists last year, 34 years of age. Still at the top of his game. Pirlo curls it in. Vucinic, it looked like, got the head to it, went over the bar. Castros was also up there. It was a perfect ball in, bending with pace right over the top of the first man and into where the bodies are. And yes, he was actually more wide open. He, he got free off his man, drifted off him, and then just didn't turn his shoulders and get over the top of the ball. Ends up heading it high. Back to live play. Nagatomo pushes it back. Higher pressure there from Juventus, but they knocked it out off Asamoa. Throw in for Inter Milan. Well, JP, they've been pressing pretty much. I think the only time they haven't pressed is when they've been able to, to pass out or, or a misplayed ball, and then they'll sit back. So they're definitely still working themselves hard, even though they've, they've talked about the fatigue. Tevez just crushes Cambiasso. So Countryman, and the foul is going to go against Cambiasso. To bring it back. He's wondering, how is that on me? Sort of agreeing with him from up here, anyway. He's seeing it live. Tevez is so strong, and he's got a lower sense of gravity. He knows that Cambiasso's first touch wasn't good enough, and just gets his body in front of him. It's quite a long advantage play, too. Inner, here's what you don't want to do. Give up many free kicks to this man. You can see Lichsteiner right now out wide is, is calling for a late run ball here. There's the delivery. Lichsteiner played it across. Not shooting it looked like, but trying to find an open man in front. Yeah, those are always difficult. I mean, he was wide open, but when your body's running towards the end line, you really have to concentrate on trying to hit it even further back than you normally would because your momentum's going towards the goal. More often than not, you end up heading it back across too tight, too flat. The last guy back was Pirlo playing it back to goal. Here's another look. And that's that late run. And you can see Tevez got free for a few seconds, but header came across just a little too flat, like I said, right to Handanovic in, in a good spot. And just pushing forward. They had a draw in their first game. Lost on penalties, still considered a draw. And then lost to the LA Galaxy. Big result to the Galaxy. Huge result. And they've played well. You can see how, how quick the Galaxy's players are. They, they know what's going on in, through training. It's been high intense. So when these young players come in, they can make that adjustment. And they played very well against Juventus. It's Cambiasso. There's Manovic. Sub earlier in this tournament. Now has become a starter for Inter. Long towards Palacio, cut off by Chiellini, who covers so much ground, even though he's the left back there in the three person backfield. Well, JP, you can see that Lichsteiner staying high, he's not dropping back. Event is so, so solid with that back three, he can stay higher, and what it's done is it's caused Pereira to stay back, and it's almost now becoming more of a four back system and then turning into a five back system, and Juventus has it. So, Lichsteiner's Pressing high is, is helping Juventus be able to play out a lot easier. Chiellini wide at the halfway line. Vucinic. Into it looked like they were spreading apart. He almost got through. That's great feet. Ended up holding it on just a little bit too long, but didn't have any options. Kuzmanovic says Chiellini went down. And this may be more than just a foul. We're going to get a chance to see this again, and I, I disagree with this. The ball's free, and Alvarez is just trying to win it. I know after he hit, after he gets the ball, it falls through and hits Kilini. But for me, that's just two guys challenging for the ball. And yeah, 
one losing and not feeling so good afterwards. No card, just a foul free kick again for Andrea Pirlo. 100th cap this summer, the Confederations Cup for Italy. Look at the way you can switch. Brought down quickly, Lichsteiner. Now the run in the box for Brucinic. He lost it there. Inter tried to get out of this. Vidal cut it off. Back for Pirlo. Licksteiner. Looking to cross it. Slowed down by Guarin. Not much room there, and it's lost out. It's a throw in for Inter Milan. Let's go downstairs to Keith Costigan. Thanks, JP. Well, Carlos Tevez back in the side tonight. The first game against Everton, he looked very dangerous, drifting into the gap between the opposition midfield and defence. That's where he actually started the game tonight, but he's also interchanging very well with Mirko Vucinic as they look to form a partnership up front for Juve. And so far, like Brian said, they seem to have a very good understanding. Guys? Thank you, Heath. How long will it take for them to get a real, true understanding so they know where each other is going on the field when it really counts? Oh, I think the, the most important part is you have two players with good soccer brains, and uh, that connection is always going to be there as far as which run to make. Then it becomes the timing and knowing, all right, is he going to play a first-time ball around the corner or do I need to hold my run? Those sort of things just come with time. Alvarez. Chiellini gave it right back to Palacio. Has two men to beat. Palacio trying to go wide. Look at how many players come back for Juventus. They see one guy in trouble, they all come back. They swore, but the, the opposite side of it, he has no help. And Palacio gets there. From distance, low shot was wide of a diving Buffon. An opportunity there from almost out of nowhere for Inter. And Guarín. Well, Guarín's in a great spot. He wins this ball. It was a little bit loose. And uh, let me tell you, he can strike a ball. And, and I think he does not strike it near as well there as he normally does. When he does, he, he, he hits it so perfectly on the ball and moves it. He's trying to pick out the corner, just couldn't do it. Marquisio, low shot wide of Handanovic. Looked good when it left his foot, but it is wide. Almost a case of anything you can do, I can do better. But actually, just exactly the same. So Marquise, just as Inter keeps dropping off, dropping off, he takes the space and strikes it, tries to go back across the goalkeeper and just too much angle on it and goes wide. Renokia back to Handanovic. That was a little too casual. Goalkeeper will clear it. I think that's the one thing that they had in the last game against Valencia. They had the out ball long because Belfodil was in. Belfodil was big, strong, tall forward who could not only hold the ball, but he was good in the air at winning things and, and providing that outlet. They just weren't able to make that connection to Palacio. And balls kept coming back and coming back, and I think that's why we see Palacio in and not Belfodil, although he was their sharpest player. The foul called there. Ball pushed forward by Campagnato. And that tackle, the ball is won by Juventus. That's just a loose touch from Freddy Guarín there. He tried to get across with the body, but the ball was a little bit loose, and well won. Tevez, after getting it from Pirlo, finds Cassidus. Vidal on the right. Vidal settles it. It's on the 2010 World Cup for Chile. Tevez couldn't slip through. Vucinic can't find the ball. Pereira pushes it back. And look, look, JP, look. Palacio is upset by himself. Yeah. For, I mean, Alvarez is trying to make the, make the, the connection there, and it's just too late. It's hard to make that connection. And a lot of times, teams with back threes or back ends up being back fives. They have one player that, as soon as they win it, he has to get up and make that connection with with a basic target forward. And right now, they're not able to find that right now. Pushed by Benucci. And the return a bit behind Vucinic. Happened in front of him, he might have broken through. Again, we get a chance to see that just combination. And Vucinic knows that Tevez is right over his right shoulder, just plays it right around the corner. And good defending by Jesus, getting his body into it, sort of affecting the timing. Samoa for Pirlo. Spent a decade with AC Milan. A lot of people were surprised when he left them, went to Juventus. He's helped them win two straight Serie A titles. Vidal back for Pirlo. Will that ball stay in play? Almost. Right 
right idea, and very few could execute a play of that distance, but he can. Just not that time. He certainly can, and that's why you saw Lichtsteiner just continue his run. And Warren thought no chances he could be able to make that connection, but uh, Warren ends up right. But it's a dangerous thing to let someone run when there's no pressure on the ball to pull up. The ball is intended for Palacio. He's been all over this field trying to get a supply of the ball. Mostly on the left side this time, made his run right. Walter Mazzari has had his team struggling is probably an understatement, I would say. You haven't scored a goal in this tournament, you've given up six. That's a real struggle. He doesn't have a lot of reinforcements. They didn't spend a lot of money during the offseason. They went young. Right. They, de they definitely didn't bring in a lot of players and, and really anybody that's considered a world class. There's a few. Like Belfodil, who brought in, and really, I think he's a project being so young because he's got good feet, but nobody to make an instant impact what they need. And then you add in the fact that the formation change because that's always going to take time. They brought in potential, right, more than anything else? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've seen bits and pieces from the players they brought in. Cambiasso laid it off of the left. Inter with that long strike, given right back to Asamoa. Chiellini, back to Buffon. Did not have a good Confederations Cup, but still in the discussion for top goalkeepers of the world. Well, he certainly was before, and I think he still has it in him. I think there's just been a little, little few leaks, you know, one or two mistakes that normally never would happen. seeing both the teams press high when they get a chance. I think you can see just by watching it, the pace of the game is much slower. Thoughts in the first 20 plus minutes? Here? Yeah, yeah, I think Juventus is handling this much better than, than Inter is. It's not something that's surprising considering that how Inter has sort of struggled to find their continuity and rhythm, but I'd be happy if, if I was Juventus. I think the, the one thing I'd want more now is when they do get into the final third, you can look up and with Tedes and Vucinus making great runs, a lot of times one of them is being pulled out. And so when the ball gets wide to cross, there's only one in the box. They have to make sure that, I mean, you have players like Vidal and Marquise who can make the box and make a big difference. And just like to see them add in a little bit more offensively. Fiorello lost it there. Kuzmanovic right to the middle. Pereira got the touch back. Holds it. Gives it back to Guarín. It's been a starter in every game so far in this tournament. Third straight. Turned away by Casades. Throw in for Inter Milan. Into the box it comes. That's Alvarez. Nice dribbling. Finds the open man. Flag goes up on Palacio. Wouldn't have counted anyway. And the first time they looked good. Offensively, certainly a bright spark. You can see Alvarez's feet right there, just able to play the ball underneath him and has the, the awareness to see Palacio. And Palacio is just a little bit off sides, but he got out of, Alvarez got out of a tight spot to free him. Palacio just couldn't hold the, hold the line a little bit longer. And look at the save then afterwards right before. Pirlo, deep in his own half. Casares. Ron for Vucinic, using his strength to try to win that ball. Second effort. Finds Superman Lichsteiner. Third down, now back up. Suve will just play on. Samoa played for Ghana in the last World Cup. That's blocked. Pirlo again. So many more touches lately by Andrea Pirlo. Lichsteiner, that doesn't work, he goes the other way. Tevez spinning to Asamoa. Kiel. Tevez finds this. Trying to play it across, Cambias a bit even from that earlier challenge. Tevez gets hit again. This one is going to be called. It's another free kick. And maybe more. Yellow card was given. 
Jesus basically knows he's fouled and he's there the first time and here's Asamoah's little nice little oh, you're not going to give me the line okay I'm just going to pull top and back heel but you go back to the foul and Tevez takes a quick peek around the corner and sees Jesus coming so he's able to get his feet off the ground so it's not going to be as bad of a foul it could be but you add in the fact when he takes that peek he notices Bucinich is right off his right shoulder tries to flip it around and go and Jesus takes a good foul for the team his free kick about 26 yards away. Andrea Pirlo. Looks to be the one that will take it. Crowd's anticipating he's going to take it. And he does. Sending it in, but it's wide. Around the wall, but not past Handanovic. He's able to get it up and down. It's just a little bit too far outside. You can see that short run up, not a lot of pace on the run up, but a lot of pace on the ball. It dips and Darren is going wide, let it go. Settled at the back by Renokia for Inter. Juan Jesus, who is just booked, finds the open man. It's back to him, the Brazilian international will go into the middle. Nokia to Campagnato. Red card in the first game against Chelsea. And you can hear that in the collision. It's going against Bucinic. It's got to be going against Asamoah, if anything, because that, and then anything, Bucinic got fouled. But the one thing that, that sort of sticks out in my mind, we've talked a lot about how fatigued the, both these teams are. And you can see it when they make their passes. Simple passes are, are tending to be just off by a yard or two. And when they're fully fit and fully in rhythm, that doesn't happen. You've got to see a chance to see their prayers offsides. Matsari's team played Sunday. Today's Tuesday. So, it's so three changes, yeah. too. I mean, and Juventus played on Saturday, so they had the extra day, but they had to fly from San Francisco or L.A. all the way here. From the West Coast. So you can understand these teams are getting ready for the start of the season. It's August 25th. Inter's playing home against Genoa. Juventus will be at Sampdoria, but before that, on the 18th, the Italian Super Cup, Juve has to play against Lazio. Nagatomo. Campagnaro. Vucinic right after him. Won that ball. Now he did. Well, right now, Inter's putting themselves under a lot more pressure than they need to be because you've been baiting them into play. I mean, they're, they're pressing up high, allowing one person out there to pitch ball, and as soon as they pitch it to him, Juve just closes him down right away. You're going to have trouble. You've got to free him up. Whether that's pushing someone forward who can win a header, open up some gaps. Good left foot of Alvarez, and he just misses Kuzmanovic. He made the good run. And a perfect pass. Perfectly weighted pass. Directionally. Asamoah. Chiellini. Switched by Bonucci. Do they content to just work it around? Look for space. Chiellini. Try to lay it off. He and Tevez that time not on the same page. Jesus will receive in the middle. Cambiasso early release off Guarín. Palacio. He's high up now. There's support coming. Palacio cuts across. Sees the support. There, big shot, big save, big rebound. Palacio scores. Inter have their first goal of the tournament. And our first real sign of rhythm. That ball goes into Freddy Guarini. He knows. He takes a peek around the corner. Sees Palacios drifted out wide. Palacios, this is where I think he's so special. He engages the defender and then lays off a perfect ball back to Guarini. He strikes him. What a pace. Buffon unable to handle it. Pushes the rebound right back. And there is Alvarez for the tap in. That was a juicy rebound off Buffon. And Alvarez makes it count. 28th minute, first goal for Inter in this tournament. And it's the third straight game that Juventus have allowed 
the first goal. That's so unlike them during the regular season anyway. They're so solid defensively. They rarely give up goals, let alone first goals of the game. It certainly is. And they just got caught out. They, they didn't notice Palacio was drifting out wide. And like I said before, he, he's just so good at, at getting into those gaps. And then when he's able to run at players with the ball, he's so effective. Makes the right decision. And the rest is history. Goal coming against the run of play. But finally, Inter is on the board. First time we've seen them have that much support for Palazzo. There are at least three other players around the box. Cambiasso clears. 1v1 situation that time, won by Juventus. And that was a better job by Benici. Immediately recognizing that Palazzo was running off the Ceres. Gets over across and stops the danger. towards Ronokia, now back towards the goalkeeper. Handanovic finds the open man. Campagnano, Nagatomo, first Japanese player to ever play for Inter Milan. Campagnano will switch. Campagnano is one of the players that Matsari brought over from Napoli. Set long and the offside flag was up on Palacio. As of late, we're seeing Palacio just trying to drift off that outside defender, whether it's a right side or a left side, and just that time going a little too early. Here we'll try to play that one in. Licksteiner to Tevez. The return! Licksteiner chips! Handanovic did a great job in coming out, so there wasn't much room for Licksteiner to try to slot that one home. Well, that was a fantastic ball. The, the interchange right here, chest to chest down, and knows Licksteiner's going to continue his run, waits it perfectly. The ball just won't sit down. It takes a big hop off the turf, tries to just dig it over the top. All right, for live action, Tevez lost it before he could get a quality strike on goal. Kuzmanovic. Nice ball ahead. Alvarez tries to run onto it, took a bump, and it's a foul on Pirlo. Well, JP Kuzmanovic has looked so much sharper in this game than he did in the last game. And his touch is sharper, but also his, his passes have been much more crisp and deadly. You see Alvarez was trying to take that across. Saw Pirlo come in and just rides the, the hip and goes down. Kuzmanovic came in in the first game as a sub, and he, he looked a bright spark. And they needed it at the time, but then the last game, he just maybe it was sluggish, tired leg. Here he looks much more, much sharper. How much the grass helps instead of the turf, the hard turf that some of these guys were playing on before. This one taken down by Palacio. Nice move to get inside. And that's cut off. It's going to be, should be a goal kick. Yeah. Well, we go back to answer your question, it's a huge thing, especially if, when you play on Bermuda grass, you know they can cut it so tight. When they do that, it's Palacio again, just trying to suck Chiellini in a little much, but good cover. Benucci getting across there. But it, it speeds up the play. You know, you, you, you think about uh, the, the grass laid over the top of the turf, it's spongy and it's soft and your legs are already tired. I'll stop talking about being tired, but it does. It has an effect on the game, has an effect on the pace. Castro moves it to the right and gets the return from Vidal. Tevez let it go for Vucinic, but that could be costly. Numbers going forward now for Inter Milan. Six on that counter. Kuzmanovic, cross, it's there. Lost it, laid it off. Alvarez. Some quick feet from Alvarez tonight. Make some things happen. Kuzmanovic will have a throw in. Serbian international saw him too on that Serbian World Cup squad in 2010. Yeah, I loved his decision making there. He could have tried to go around the, the, the player and get, get end line, but takes the early cross and he was, he was spoiled for choice. Palacio decides to take it. Two of the players could have landed on a hit first time. Campagnaro's throw in. Got it back from Palacio. Here's Cambiasso with that late run. Knocked away. Corner for Inter. Well, it's amazing what a goal can do because Inter is definitely finding much more rhythm and much more of the play because they're up, up higher. You can see that 
Cambiasso is now making the box. Good run, good weighted ball into him and able to get a corner out of it. Cambiasso working against Asamoah. Off of this corner from Kuzmanovic. That's cleared away. Of Vidal. Carrera, only man back near the halfway line. Moves it upfield. Still going to be a throw in for Inter Milan. A one to nothing lead. A goal by Alvarez in the 28th minute off a big rebound given up by Gigi Buffon. Just wears the name Ricky on the back of his jersey. Ricardo Alvarez. Some space for Bonucci. Chiellini ahead for Vucinic. Double up there. He got free. Tevez joins him on the attack. Almost. Tevez is looking left. If he's looking right, he's in. He's in. I, I just think Vucinic realized that in his back line was stepping up, so he needed. He had to reach for it and get it off quickly. Because as soon as uh, the right back steps up, he knows he has to play it. He has to play it too straight. Good run off him for sure by Tevez. Just that timing issue. Zmanovic will work it up. 36th minute. One to nothing. Inter Milan lead. Alvarez. <laughs> Slotting it across. Juan Jesus. Pereira. Guarín makes the run. He had nowhere to go though. Lost it out. Juventus ball. But from farther back. Tevez played it over. Now up for Vucinic. That was cut off, but Juventus doesn't miss a beat. Asamoa launches this far side of the field. Lichsteiner couldn't complete that pass. Asamoa is putting his hands up. He has all this space in front of him. He's playing a 40-yard diagonal ball to a man that's marked. I would have loved to have just seen him run into that space. Tevez from Bucinic. Too far. Trying to find Marquisio. Juventus look a little frustrated on some of these passes. Well, you can see that the timing's just not there and, and different ideas. And I think, for me, if Tevez just waited a tiny bit longer after this great run, you could see that gets the ball in and he just plays it a split second too early. I know he's trying to play it into that little gap that Nagam... Nakatomo is left. Nakamoto is left, but he's got to wait just a little bit longer because if Nakamoto goes, continues that run and falls off, then he can play it right into the feet rather than into the space. Colasso well, played it back to Cambiasso. Nice couple of moves there. And maybe a third. Held up. Guarin. Easy play. After all that, all that hard work, he had Alvarez out wide, but he knows how long he can strike him. He's just not finding the, the center of the ball right now. You can see it uh, just gives him the shoulder to Vidal and skips by. But right here, I think he should have passed it rather than trying to hit a bomb. And he just hasn't found it yet. Vucinic tried to lay that one off. And that's cut off. Alvarez. Look how quickly Chiellini gets stuck in there. But Inter still have the ball. Coming back on the break. Palacio. Out wide, chased by Cáceres. And that one goes out as he try to get Inter going in the offensive area. Yeah, attacking just, third. Just a little too much on that little pitch around the corner for Pereira to get onto it. But the commitment he's showing, just making sure that he's making those runs to try and lengthen the field. He's been very effective for Inter. Asamoa back for Chiellini in the 39th minute. Seventh place game between two longtime Italian rivals, Inter Milan and Juventus. Vucinic holding it, finds the open man, and then a stumble or a foul? Stumble apparently. There's no call. Juve fans start whistling. As Vidal is slow to get up. Inter Milan have it halfway line. 
and switched Campagnano. Nagatomo. Play back to Juan Jesus. And then to Pereira on the opposite side. Inter playing with a lead. That's something they've not had the opportunity to do in the first couple of games. So we'll see how they handle that early success. They've definitely settled down. Not, not just right here. They've showed they can have this possession here, but they've settled down defensively. They've been able to free a few players to get forward and make that connection with Palacio. The Alvarez pass back. Palacio thinking about it, laid it off. He drew all that attention. Switch towards Alvarez. The quick feet. Doubled up. Campagnaro. First touch failed. Now it's cleared by Juve. Out for a throw in for Inter Milan. We get a chance to see there. Just Juve knowing all your little, little sh positional shape. Being in the right spots. Any shot that came in was going to get blocked. Any pass trying to penetrate would have been picked off. Here's his last chance. You can see it. Vidal takes a nice touch, and there might have been some contact from Pereira, but whether or not it was enough to, to bring him down, I'm not sure. He gets a touch right on that knee, and some referees are going to give that a call because there was contact. Back to live action, swung wide towards Brucinic. They went for it. That was a difficult ball to receive. Oh, boy. Let's go downstairs to Keith Costigan. Thanks, JP. Well, we talk about how important these preseason games are to a coach. I can tell you, Walter Massari has been on his feet and animated the entire first half. And when his side scored, he celebrated emphatically with the rest of his coaching staff. They won't get any City out points tonight, but you can tell how important it is for his side to put in a good performance, guys. Thanks, Keith. This is Alvarez looking up, cutting back, shooting it. He was going near post. He had that far post. May have been tougher for him, but... Saw the big opening from up here. And oh, the players, too. Fabulous footwork. He's looked so sharp today. It's the best game, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. By far his best game. He's been getting forward much more now, driving at players. You can see just cuts back beautifully. But for me, that's always got to go to the far post. Gigi Buffon is not someone that's going to cheat normally as a goalkeeper. You, you add into the option that you have Freddy Guarin break it to the back post. And if it goes wide, he's got to tap it. Kisio lost it there. Campagnolo. Samoa should be able to get this in front of his manager, Conte. Back for Chiellini. Pirlo. Vidal. And this is what I mean by their shape. You can see Inter right now. They're leaving Palacio back up. But they've got everybody back behind the ball. But also their lines are good. The gaps between the lines aren't big. It's causing big problems for Juventus as far as breaking them down. I and mean, then look at this, Palacio out the ball. Palacio have more touches in this first half than maybe any of the other games combined. They're looking for him, but they're also finding him this time. So true. Here's Alvarez back to Palacio. And asked him about these two teams playing a seventh place game. He said when Inter plays Juventus, it's never <laughs> friendly. <laughs> never. Right. Sure. Kisil. Tevez. Kisil again, number eight in the black and white stripes of Juventus to Asamoa. 43rd minute. Juventus down by Echo. Switched across. Vidal. Pulling it back. Open man was Caceres. Turn around and this time he got it. This time, it is a penalty. Well, Juan Jesus has been battling with anybody who has showed to the ball and tried to pin, and he's been fighting and fighting, and the referee just saw too much. You can see, Lucic, as soon as he knows he's got a pin, he's going to turn back around, and that extra leg came across. Whether or not it fully got him, he can't swing out like that. Most referees are going to see that as pure contact. The touch back across, probably Pereira is going to come back and win it, but referee didn't like the, f the fact that the leg got out there and brings down Lucinich and probably kick. And Vidal is going to take it. 
He tried her in the first one, but it was not called. Well, I think that one was more of a penalty. This one right here was more of a penalty yeah. than, than that one, for sure. Vidal versus Hadanovic to try to get an equalizer before halftime. Ten goals last year for Vidal. Tied in with Vucinic for the club lead. He scores 1-1 one, one off that penalty kick that was converted. Here we're going to chance to see the foul again. And he's got him pinned. He turns and... Andre Zeus, instead of moving his feet, tries to kick out. He can't kick out like that. And this is all about pace and placement because Hadanovic gets a good read, goes the right way, and if it's not close enough to the post with that pace, you can see how big Hadanovic is. He would have gotten there, but Nadal takes it perfectly. Even now at one, we're coming officially in the 45th minute. We'll see about stoppage time. So Inter had that lead, but couldn't hold it. At least not till halftime. Ball play back towards Handanovic. We're in stoppage time now. One minute will be added on. Ball played long. Caceres able to defend that against Guarín. Try to back heel it, keep it in play, but the tire ball was out. And you can see the idea starting to form from Inter because as soon as they get in that, that left back position and Pereira drops back, Juan Jesus look, takes a look up and Guarín's making that run in the space instead of Palacio this time and just can't get his body in front of Caceres quickly enough. Ball just bounces off of him, but they've got this idea now and it's working. File on the near sideline in front of Matsari. Enters coach. Campagnaro with the restart. Seconds left in the opening half in the seventh place game between Juventus and Inter Milan. On Jesus. And that's going to do it. Quick thoughts in the first half. Well, I think for 15 minutes, Juve had all the game. They just couldn't really create many chances. Inter was puffing and puffing in a sense they couldn't really make that connection but when they made that connection it changed the game completely with Palacio making great runs off of the ball into space causing all sorts of problems and, uh, with much sharper a team than they have so far in this tournament probably a just result that it's even at one after 45 minutes of play it was a one to nothing lead for Alvarez who scored in the 28th minute but then Vidal on a penalty kick he converted in the 45th minute makes it 1-1 between Juventus and Inter Milan Guinness International Champions Cup. Right, for Juventus. They will inch forward to Asamoa. To Tevez. The Argentinian is blocked. Vucinic kept it alive. Now it's cleared ahead to Alvarez for Inter. Inter in the black and blue uniforms as they draw that foul. Juventus in the black and white stripes. And Juan Pablo Cruz only played one game last year. Signed a new two-year deal. He's clearly the backup, but he does have some experience. So if Handanovic falters or is injured, Carrizo is the man. All the way back towards Chiellini. To John Luigi Buffon. Right side Caceres. Steiner. Back to Caceres. And back to Buffon. To the outside is Chiellini. Goal scores are Alvarez in the 28th minute for Inter. 45th minute Vidal on a penalty kick to equalize for Juventus. And Alvarez certainly has been sharp for Inter, but Palacio has been my player for Inter so far, I think. Asamoa on the left. Bodies in the box, including Lichsteiner, who went up for it but couldn't get to it. It's an awkward landing for Cambiasso. Stone is holding. Hopefully that's not his knees holding. So he came up and landed, and as soon as he landed, he immediately went and grabbed. See this ball from Inasimo. It's just a teasing ball, and Lichner just overruns it, and Pereira does a good job of getting into him. And a chance here we're going to get to see the injury. This comes down. It looks like he got hit. 
in the air, and hopefully that's what it is. And it wasn't on the, the landing that he actually just took a cleat in the air on the outside of his knee. Ah, the old I'll be fine. Yeah, magic spray. I like it. It'll take a lot to get him out of a lineup. Three goals last year, played in 33 games for his club. He spent nine years with Inter. Doesn't give up on any ball. A good chance to see you get across. Lichtstein is trying to make that little gap run there. And Pereira does a good job, but right there you can see Pereira's back leg just comes across and hits his knee. Andreas is ready to come back on the field with the referee's permission. But not yet. The ball is played back to Carrizo and now Grajeda. That referee lets Cambiasso back out on the field. Carrizo. Line, but gave it right to Chiellini off his chest. He lost it there to Palacio. Last touch by Kuzmanovic. A little sloppy from both teams coming out of the, the halftime break, but an awfully dangerous chest pass from Chiellini. I think he had options to head it forward, but tried to find out some more. Palacio read it. for Asamoah. Touch back. Pirlo. Pulls it back. Vidal. Licksteiner. Goes up in support. Tevez pulled it back. Vucinic. There's the pesky Cambiasso. It's an advantage call as Guarín laid it off. Right now, Juventus is getting a lot of balls played in the feed, whether it's Tevez or Vucinic, and Cambiasso is just collapsing on top of him. So you notice they need to make sure that he has an option, whether it's the dog getting closer to Pirlo or Cambiasso. And Marquisio. Alvarez laid it off. Got it from Campagnato. The Argentinian makes his move. That time he was broken up. Yarrow. Now towards that right side. The pass was intended for Nagatomo. We're going for Inter. Subs are up. We expect to see a bunch in the second half. That's been the norm during this and actually all preseasons. Certainly, JP, when you're on the sidelines, you want to get as much of the game as you possibly can because. Running and, and fitness work in preseason is, is never fun until you step on the field and you can see the, the benefits you get from it. Always giving right back to Inter. Nagatomo to the outside. Alvarez. Palacio. And a roll out. Should be a goal kick for Buffon. We're going to chance to see Palacio's been doing this all game. This is great defending from Keeley. You're just getting into Palacio, but Palacio will run into the gaps. Just very strong, tough defending there. Ball played towards the feet of Vucinic. Now Licksteiner goes in after it and forces the turnover. It'll be a throw in for Juventus in the attacking third. Vucinic. Pirlo. 21 of the black and white stripes of Juventus all the way across the field. Asamoah brought it down. Defended by Nagatomo. Going at him. A Samoa, nice cut to the outside. Played it across, but right at Carrizo. That was quality, though. It's a very good play by Asamoah. You could see he engaged the defender and then took him on one-on-one -on -one instead of crossing the ball early. Just takes it down, engages, knows he doesn't have any support, Nagatomo, so he goes right at him, able to get a nice little dink by, and then... Just couldn't pull his cross back. Now dropping back. Try to find Vucinic. It's coming back towards Juventus territory. Bonucci. And Alvarez on him. It's Asamoah. Marquisio. Pirlo. Vidal in a 1 1 game. Tevez cutting. Trying to play it across. It's deflected. He's going to get a corner kick out of this one. We talked about their combination play. I think that was a little bit fortunate. Just squirts a free from Vucinic and goes right to Tevez. Tevez then takes the space. 
Yes, he's the overlapping one. He really didn't have the opportunity to play it back to Vucinic. Then he'll close that down, try to squeeze the ball through, and ends up getting a corner kick. Here alone, sending it across. Quick shot taken, goes over the bar. It's a goal kick for Inter Milan. It's very well done by Kuzmanovic there. Realizing that the ball was all by himself. He tries to get there. He doesn't get there, but puts him off enough so he can't really fully get the timing right. Backing up, backing up, can't get there. Vidal tries to get over the top of it, but just can't. Goes over for a goal kick. Warren starting into on the run. Looking, thought about it for a split second. Alvarez look at the run by Nagatomo. Alvarez cutting, trying to shoot it from the edge of the 18. Inter try to keep the pressure on, but it's Asimo holding it. Here, low. Vidal, right side line, Lichsteiner, Bucinic. Back it comes, Casades, here, low. That quick ball. He could have taken it in further, but he chose that option. Yeah, a lot of Asamoa there, but Asamoa was able to get on the end of it. But right before that, when the ball was at Lickstrider's feet, Marquisio could have played it a nice diagonal ball because, I mean, Lickstrider could have made a, a great diagonal ball to Marquisio because he was wide open. Nagatomo realized it and came back and closed that down. Carolo looking, trying to find Tevez. But those are down to preseason things. I mean, yeah. you know, we've seen Lichtsteiner pick out those balls all the time, and Marquisio make the box and cause tons of problems because defenders are trying to keep their eye on someone else. And just that lovely ball from Pirlo. Tevez tries to stretch, just can't take it down. Got by Casades. Be a throw for Pereira. Taken down by the corner flag, expecting a call. Didn't get it. Let's go downstairs to Keith Costigan. Oh, thanks, JP. Well, Inter did make a, a tactical adjustment after the first half. Esteban Cambiasso, who had been pressing a little bit higher, sitting deeper as a defensive midfielder. It seems like he has been detailed to pick up whichever Juventus forward does drop into the space. In the first half, both Tevez and Vucinic took turns, and now Cambiasso, the man picking up whichever forward drops into the hole. Des? Thanks, Keith. This is another collision involving Cambiasso, whose role has changed a bit now, here in the second half. He's always around the action, though, <laughs> Cambiasso. <laughs> He's trying to say, I got my big toe to that. Has been forever. Well, he's, he reads the game so well, and he sees the trouble, and, and Keith be, you know, brings up that great point of when the ball goes in, he's he's the first to drop down. You know, he's got to make sure that positionally he also cuts down angle passes through that, that take the midfield out of play. Tevez, stronger than he looks at times. This time it's cleared. It stays in play. Chased down by Casadas. Bonucci for Chiellini. Pirlo. In the middle for Vidal. Chiellini pushing forward higher up the field. This bounces into the box to Pereira. He'll try that long ball to Palacio. And he's fouled by Bonucci. Quick restart. That was Buffon. Was fortunate that Kuzmanovic didn't get it cleanly. Oh, he's in. Just exceptional awareness. You can see Cambiasso sees the whole field and notices that Juventus back three hadn't dropped quick enough. Here's the foul. Palacio does great to make sure he holds that ball up. But as soon as Cambiasso takes a look out of that right right corner and sees Kuzmanovic plays the ball, Kuzmanovic just I think it's in between strides, trying to jump and trap and just misses it. The beauty of the quick free kick caught Juve off guard. 
for Bagatomo. Too far away from Kuzmanovic. Will be retrieved by Juventus. Bonucci. Pirlo. This is the interesting part, GP, because I think both these teams would be very happy to pass it around, and they'll be happy for, to keep it in front of them and try and catch it on the break. But it'd be, who makes the right decision at the right time? You can see there, Asamoah's first touch was heavy and enters off. Pereira, 31 on the black and blue of Inter Milan. Try to square it, it was blocked by Pirlo. Pirlo and Vidal. And now it's Andrea Pirlo one more time, pushing it to the left. And then back on that topic, what I mean then for Juventus is they love to just find those little gaps. Like here, Pirlo will pick his head up, they'll see it pass to the play, they'll play it. Otherwise, they'll keep possession. Tevez looking, setting it in. The flick once, then a second one off the side netting. Marquisio. We're going to see a bunch of changes for Juventus. Well, excellent goaltender here. You see Tevez makes a great run, takes a touch, sees that Marquisio is getting right in front of Cambiasso, and Marquisio knows he has to do something special, tries it, but the goalkeeper closed down the angle. Tevez head up, awareness, sees that, just lays it in there, not a lot of pace. Tries to back heel around the corner, but well done by the substitute goalkeeper, Carrizo. A bunch of changes here. Try to get them all to you. Samoa is going to be coming out. Paulo Di Ceglia will be coming in. Mauricio Isla has come in as well. And Olsen is going to come in for Inter. Patrick Olsen, number 90, will be jumping in for Cambiasso. And that's been a pretty usual sub, hasn't it? Olsen's come in. He's got a lot of steel. Sometimes he gets a little overzealous. Committing a little too many fouls. But he definitely has the work rate and the commitment. Bravo, bravo. Play moves on with Inter in possession. Left side, Juan Jesus. Juventus still have a number of players up, warming up on the sideline. out, but there was a foul, so it'll be a free kick coming up for Inter. Much more effective game today for that man, Palacio. He's been all over this field, looks very dangerous. It certainly has, J.P., and it, you see it in spurts in the last two games. Just really hasn't been able to find the ball there as much as it here. In this situation, he's always been the outlet ball. So anytime they get in any trouble or they look and they win the ball in good spots, they're looking for him right away, and he's been very effective. It's Marco Storari, backup goalkeeper, just replaced Buffon moments ago. Alvarez over the ball in the free kick. Sending it in, it's deflected wide. Last touch, though. Enter. Well, if we get a chance to see this replay, you can see Chiellini was just absolutely all over Pinocchio. Takes him down, but the referee didn't see it. Caceres will drop it back. Bonucci. Turnover. Inter will come back. Not for long. It's Vidal. And he'll go forward. The pass needed to be better. Tunich almost got to that. May have thought he would have been offside position. Here's Inter. Countering right. Head up. Cross by Nagatomo. Palacio. Headed it wide. He's been making a living on the flanks. Now he's making his moves towards the middle of the field. He is. And Nagatomo did this in the last game where he got more, more forward as the game went on. And you can show it. You can see there. It's a great ball. And just a little bit behind Palacio. Tries to crane his neck backward and turn it. Just can't get enough around it. Rick Steiner and Asamoah were the players subbed out. Isla and Dicheglia came in. Up the middle, Marquisio. 
It's headed for Vucinic. That's cut off. Well read. Inter's on the move with Juan Jesus. Nice run to stay on side by Palacio as he angled his run. To the outside of the box. Now inside. Big cross that had so much power on it. Just went well wide of Alvarez. Well, I think Palacio, first of all, makes a perfect run. Arts his run when Juan Jesus breaks out. As soon as he gets into this spot, he's looking at Alvarez, and Alvarez is leaning towards the back post, and he makes a run to the near post, but he doesn't make it really that hard. And I think with the combination of what you're talking about, about hitting it too hard, uh, his run, I think Palacio thought the run was going to come harder and quicker. Just wasn't able to make that connection. Just different page. Juventus wide of the attack. It's deflected in an attempt to prevent a corner. Goes out off the goalkeeper, Carrizo. Corner kick for Juventus. You hear the crowd anytime Pirlo goes into that corner to take one of these. They anticipate something potentially happening. Somebody who's always in trouble in this box is Chiellini. He seems to always get around the ball. Punched out well by Carrizo. With some contact in the box anyway. All belongs to Inter. There's the man Pirlo. Great career so far in Italy. Wonder how long he'll continue to go. He's already said that after the next World Cup he will retire internationally. But right now still going strong. Olsen. Nice ball for Alvarez. Look at the quick turn. Alvarez and Palacio, the two have really stood out the most tonight for Inter. Palacio laid it off. Nagatomo, head up. Wide open is Guarín. It's played all the way across instead to Pereira. At the end line, he'll touch it inside. It's cleared away by Casares. Casares in a great spot here. This just an excellent today. Running at the ball, running with the ball at his feet. And making the right decision. Good defending there as this ball comes across. Pereira pinching in at the back post. Plays the ball across, but again, Caceres right in the right place at the right time. Ready for the corner from Guarín. Headed across by Juventus. They'll try to move it out. One by Inter Pereira. All the way back. Nagatomo pushing it ahead for Olsen, the Danish international. Second half sub. Seen him in the other prior games here in the Guinness Cup. Casares. Marquisio. Chiellini has pure love. One game here in the second half. Pirlo looking long. Played back. That's by Isla. Pirlo laid it off and continued his run. It's back on the right side for Vidal. Isla. That's blocked and lost right there. Marisa Isla. Did they say some five years? Alvarez. Trying to take off. The players went down there as it's picked back up by Storani. He scored the first goal, Alvarez tonight. Equalizer came from Vidal. That's where we stand into the box. Carrizo makes the easy play. We've seen a lot more change of possession. Balls getting picked off. I know the Inter's sitting back a lot more because they want to catch him on the counter. But just be more economical, I think, on the ball. Don't force things when they need to hold the ball and, and move it around. That's probably going to be their best option at times instead of just giving it right back. Switch by Campagnano. Alvarez pulled back by Olsen. Speed of play, working there for Guarín. Kept it on the ground. Palacio turning. Open man to the right. Now the cross comes.
comes in and 10 for Alvarez. He was sitting there between a couple of defenders. Throw in for Inter. Great positioning by Inter's back line there. You can see Benucci is in the right spot. But anywhere near post, far post, they're all in good position to win the ball. Casades for Juventus. Vidal for Pirlo. We haven't seen much of any type of attack from Juventus. It's been all patient, all patient buildup. And I understand that we talked about how they love to just wait and wait and pick the right pass, but they've just been on top of their game. They haven't switched off. They've closed down gaps when need be. You can see Juan Jesus is getting up the backside of anybody who's showing the feed. And again, they all just tried to force the ball in and Inner shape's been very good in the second half. Pirlo for Juventus. Chiellini. Right at the middle. Vucinic, nice ball ahead. Tevez tries to run onto it. Didn't have a good angle. Isla, corner. Well, it's the first time Juan Jesus doesn't get up, up back. And he actually thinks about closing the ball down. You can see right here as we did. Vucinic turns, he thinks about closing it down, he probably should have cut that angle off, Tevez makes a great run, but short quarter, Juve's Tevez finds the open man, Marquisio fires, it's blocked, and then, after all that, Celli puts that one upstairs. for Inter Kuzmanovic hey JP, you can see everybody taking this opportunity to go and get some water both teams coming over to the sideline looks like they're checking on out and Kuzmanovic Seventieth minute, Vidal had the equalizing goal. It's one-one here. Alvarez scoring in the twenty-eighth minute. Nothing here in the second half of play. Although Inter has looked to be the better side in the second half. Here's how we got to this point in the game. And this first goal from Inter really came out of nowhere because they didn't have much of it. It was a good transition, counterattack, and strong shot by Borin and Buffon unable to really control the rebound, pushes it back into Freddy Alvarez. And here's the penalty kick call and Vucinic pins in. Jesus and Vidal makes no mistake with pace and placement. We're tied at one. There really hasn't been many opportunities for Juventus throughout this whole game, not even just the second half. We'll see some more changes. Shaq Beltadil is going to be coming in. And there's going to be another change as well. It's not Beltadil's number, so it's going to be on Juventus' side. Tevez is coming out. Fernando Llorente, another big off-season signing, will come in. So Llorente is in, Tevez is out. And they, they spent some money on Llorente. They sure did, and I really like him as a player. He just hasn't found his rhythm yet. And, and Tevez himself, I think he was stifled a little bit. They had that great combination work between him and Kucinic, but nothing really came off of it, whether they needed a, a third player coming in, because they did a good job of finding each other, but as soon as they made that combination, they weren't able to, to make that next pass, and make that penetrating pass. And now we've got uh, big man, little man, with Vucinic off and Giovinco coming in. So another substitution for Juventus. Just keep it with the same flow. Big and little. Would you rate Vucinic's night? Similar. I, I think he was more dangerous than Tevez because he was able to pin his defenders a little bit better and create some opportunities off a turn, like the penalty kick, of course, but also was able to get free and, and find that next pass a little bit more than Tevez was, at least a penetrating pass. But for me, he's that player that sort of needs a ring to box. He's an excellent finisher of the ball and just really didn't have any opportunities today. Inter. 
see what kind of an impact Belfadil has since coming on. Looked better the other day. He did. And the last two times we saw him playing, or the other day when we saw him playing, he actually was much higher. He was the lone striker. Now you got Palacio up there still making that those runs into the gap, and it's going to be his job, Belfadil's job, to connect there and get up close to him. Smanovic was the player that went out before Belfadil. Played different position, so we'll see if it's reconfigured for Inter. Casares goes back to goal to Storari. Backup goalkeepers now are the goalkeepers of record here in the second half. Pirlo rolls it to the left. These two teams meet during the Serie A season in the third week. That's when it counts for three points. Certainly does, and they'll be able to take a lot away from this game. Both teams. Vidal, Isla, crossing in front, and Carrizo does a nice job. The old players open in front. It was just a little too flat of a ball. If it was cut back a little bit, Urente was making a run across the goalkeeper. But you go in there, I'm really, I have a strong feeling, even though it's preseason, anytime you get to create doubt in, to your opponent's mind, but regardless if it's you know, a practice game, a preseason game, a friendly game, you always want to take that opportunity to have them worry about you as an opponent. Jesus playing it to the left side for Alvarez. He's been all over this field. He's now wearing the captain's armband since Cambiasso left the field for substitution. Belfadil played it wide to the right, gets the return pass. He's one of their new signings, got it free. Quick shot taken in is stopped by Storari. Off of Nagatomo. And again, Nagatomo is getting much more forward. You can see him continue his run, plays it in. Hits the ball back after the second pass and tries to head it from the distance. Good strike, but just very directly at the goalkeeper. An easy save in the end. Vidal's pass ahead, the knock. Kizio, Isla, 33 in the black and white stripes of Juventus. That's that ball in the sea of black and blue. You know, just the difference of players. Isla thought Llorente wanted the ball to feed. Llorente was playing for the play to the back post in the air. Where was this before the tournament? Six were on the attack that time for Inter Milan. We haven't seen that until the third game. Well, it's, it is. It's all about whether or not you can commit because you know you're going to have the ball. And, and picking the right pass has been a big problem. Chirico, nice cut. Looks, played it across, passed up a shot. And you wouldn't second guess him except for that poor pass in the end. Yeah, just a little bit behind Llorente. But if I'm Llorente, I know that my... my partner is looking is looking for you so i'm going to so be like making that. sure i'm running off of every single ball it gets Juventus. that's going to be called they're going to have a free kick from about 23 to 24 yards away from goal vidal draws a lot of contact he does he's just non-stop action uh, he's not been getting as forward as, as he does in most games but that's probably down to the fact that he knows he's got to make sure and worry about the counterattack. i think he's a, he's a player that has so many different attributes and all of them good he, he's a committed player he'll work defensively he's got a soccer brain he can finish plays off as far as scoring them but he also can make the right pass and i love watching him play the game further out than the 23 or so yards. Had another yard or so to that. Pirlo's ready. He'll strike it. Off the post. Carrizo's look. The look on his face was as if he knew he was beaten and it was in. Well, Carrizo probably watched it a thousand times on TV. Happened against other goalkeepers. And as soon as it goes by him, he thinks it's in. He's not moving. Fortunately for him, the post is there. What an excellent free kick. Fantastic technique. He gets it up and down, and it's bending. And that last little bend probably took it just too far. But how impressive. That never went higher than the goal. 
so hard for a goalkeeper to get across and make that save low. A lot of times they have to get across and they can dive and get high. But Carrizo knew he could, he could do anything about that as soon as he hit it. Juventus just made another change. That's Angelo Obana. They got him from their city rivals, Torino, where he played last year. He's a summer transfer. He replaces Bonucci. And he'll play in that same spot in the center of that defense. But the game's starting to pick up now for both teams. It is. The crowd's hearing it, feeling it, and trying to be a 12th man. trio of off-season transfers that they are high on. I think if Juventus started with the same team they had at the end of last year, they're still favorites to win Serie A, but they made those moves, especially for Tevez and Llorente, more offense. They were thinking way for Champions League. For sure. Can you imagine moving to this team and you're coming into what is considered the best back three in the world anyways and getting your spot, but having seen him play in this tournament, he's a type of player that's a little more physical than the, the Juventus normal uh, back three. I think Pellini is definitely a physical player, but Aldana gets in tight to players. Palacio needed a better ball. That's a foul. I like that from Buffalo. Do you see it? Yeah. He fouled and he put his hand up like, I'm sorry, and kept running trying to get on the end of the ball. Let's see another change. They're going to go offensive. Nine is Icardi. Jonathan's also going to come in. I'll get ready for some massive subs. Palacio is out. He had a terrific game. He did. Yeah, he, for me, he's been the player of the match for both teams. His movement has, has been superb. He's been all around the ball. His decision-making has been excellent. He hasn't, when he's gotten in positions to go to goal, with numbers down, he's waiting to, for someone to come in and join and played some lovely balls to the back of the, uh, to the top of the box. Tolo comes out, Jonathan comes in, there was another substitution made as well. We'll get them all for you. We see Jonathan as a sub in each game, loves to push forward. And Jesus. He does that. that. That's part of that whole new formation change because Gregatomo used to be that, that right back. But he's been put forward and you've seen he's very capable of serving a great ball. And now Jonathan slides into that spot. Jesus, that was one of the three changes made by Inter, getting some fresh legs out there. In a game that was already picking up in its tempo, the fresh legs can only help, I would think. Very true. I'm, I'm anxious to see Icardi in, on a field that's a little bit quicker than the fields he's been playing on because he's looked a little bit slow, a little bit heavy in the leg. He certainly knows how to finish the ball going on his pass, but so far when he's been in positions, he's been caught with the ball a little bit too quick, a little bit too much for me. A little chance to play now with Delphidil. Those were the two, I guess you'd have to call them big moves, bigger moves that they made. A little contact, no foul was called. They're just trying to figure out where the goal is going to be coming from this year. So the hope is that Delphidil can help them as one player, and Icardi is another. Jonathan in some trouble. Got it free to Campagnano. Back for Chiellini. JP, when you're talking about the, the forwards and the need for goals, I think that the one positive about, even though they haven't really made that connection, Delfino's been sharp. Uh, been able to run with the ball to be looks strong. But they're different players than they already had. And they need they need them to, to find the good mix, where to be at certain balls. And the score one one and about ten minutes to go. Should point out this will go right to penalties if it's tied after ninety, no thirty minutes of overtime. Right to penalty kicks if tied after ninety. Delfidil, you get the sense. Teams are gonna have chances at least to connect the way it's going now. It's open. Jonathan holds it, pushes it back. Campanaro over to Jonathan. Played with Neymar with Santos. And of course now with Barcelona. Alvarez taking it back. His goal started it tonight. Icardi, nice pullback. Icardi, right side. Jonathan settles. 
Pitts looks up, sends it in towards the post. Just about caught by Caceres to Stolari. Well, that's excellent defending. Again, Juventus in a great shape. Back line was tight. Not a lot of space in between them, gaps in between them. They got to play that ball in over the top. And easy picking for Juventus. Olsen has it. Big switch. Isla cuts it off. Pirlo goes after it. Vidal going to play it down for Inter. And then one for Juve. The play has been stopped. And it's Pereira who's down. He's in his leg. Heard of the knee. A dead leg. But he certainly was trying to win the ball. Isla was quicker to it reacting. Here, he just gets out in front of him. It looked like he landed pretty hard after the, the contact. How tough is this, Brian? Three games yeah. in, in, the, in some situations in seven or eight days with travel, turf, all of that. How tough? Yeah, it's extremely difficult. You know, I, I talk a lot about the science of soccer now and the ability to, for players to have recovery drinks, the tights, uh, massage therapists. And, and those things all are beneficial. Uh, but physically, it's always going to be demanding. And, and, and the, the, these are great things about preseason. One, it puts you in situations where you're fatigued. And the, the good players, the excellent players, the players that will last long, will make the right decisions. They won't necessarily be able to, you know, beat three players and, and score a fabulous goal, but they won't make the mistakes that cost your team the loss. You add in the fact that preseason trips like this, you get a chance to create camaraderie. You get... Uh, a lot more time with each other than you would say if you, you had preseason at home because you know you're in the hotel together, you're having meals together, but you also have roommates. You got bus time, and it's uh, it adds to that continuity and, and the unity between the team. Pass played up, it's knocked away. It's Pirlo. He goes down again, and he gets the call. Free kick from almost the same spot where he nearly scored moments ago. Well, I'm anxious to see what Carrizo does here in the goal because if I'm him, I, I, I'm almost tempted to take a, a step to my right. You can see Giovinco took a foul right there. And then Pirlo comes in and he realizes he's only got one player ahead of him. Look where he is now. And he waits. Yeah, he's just setting his wall there. Yeah, right. but, but watch how far away he'll go. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think as far as the last time, like you said. I think you're exactly right, JP, because... Uh, these are the times when Giovinco is, is stepping over it like he wants to have some of this. If I'm anybody but Giovinco and not Pirlo, I'm going over to Giovinco and saying, listen, let Pirlo have this. Regular season, it would be Pirlo's. Giovinco, that's deflected. And it's going to be a corner kick now for Juventus. Well, he's definitely very capable, and it's a, a well-taken free kick. Inner just does its job and, and gets up in the wall. And, Chivinko is not able to get it up high enough over immediately. Just get up. And if I'm if I'm looking at tape, I can tell you right now I'm having a conversation with Belfadil. You never turn your back and, and duck out of the wall because those are the gaps you create and allow goals, easy goals. Javinka will take the corner. Llorente is up. Obrana is up and others sent in. It's a flex free in front. And the goalkeeper. Makes the nice play. That's Carrizo. Well, this ball in is just so troubling. And just misses the ball. Bounces free. And Carrizo very quickly after off to him. Just basically bounces towards him. But he gets down quick. Abana tries to get his toe on it. But can't get there. Close call. Juventus knocking on the door. It's still a 1-1 game. Alvarez and Vidal, the goal scores, both in the first half. Penalty kicks await. Clock strikes 90, maybe some stoppage time, and still have an equal score. Penalty kicks have determined some games already in this tournament. One event is lost in their opener. A field intended for a party. Great awareness. Keely there, making sure he gets back across and closing that gap down so Belfort can't just run onto her. Cardi can't just run onto her freely. Alvarez, Belfadil, looking, sending it all the way across. Jonathan brought it down, trying to cut.
cut inside, then lost it there. Juventus are back on the ball in the 87th minute. Vidal. Pirlo. I really thought that at that time when they won the ball, and Chiellini was in a good spot to really go forward because he had Llorente and, and Giovinco, but he also had a runner that was coming from, from wide right in Isla, and I think if you play that ball, you get out quicker, because right now, Inter's doing a great job of getting behind it, slowing down the pace, and all the plays basically have been coming back and around the sort of halfway line, these, these switches balls, nothing really has been that penetrating. Anytime a penetrating ball has gone in, JP, it's been picked off or won after the first touch. Juventus looking there as that ball stuck through for Llorente. That's cleared. Melfadil couldn't get to it. Giovini got it. Icardi goes hard after it. And Stagmana goes out. Juve lost it out. In the 88th minute. One goal apiece. Natalie kicks away. At level after 90. Interesting if that plays out. Neither top goalkeeper is in. The backup goalkeepers are in for the respective teams. Tries the long ball, no one close in the black and blue uniform of Inter. And you can see the rhythm is gone for Inter. They just don't have that outlet. Palacio and Icardi is trying to create those runs in, those, in that space and, and pull defenders back with him, but his pace is near what Palacio is, and they're able to make that shift, shifting and finding no joy whatsoever in Inter at the moment. Inching closer and closer towards penalty kicks to determine the winner. In this longtime Italian rivalry, although tonight it's just for seventh place in this tournament. Ball played ahead. Icardi, nine in the black and blue of Inter. Sends it all the way across for Jonathan. A couple yards closer. Drops it for Olsen. Long low shot is blocked by Obana and cleared. Nodded back into the inner half. Andrioli. Herrera. Back to Carrizo. In the 90th minute. We're not near as much action, especially after the first 15 minutes of the first half. That first half really picked up pace and found good rhythm. Both teams were, were passing the ball. Juventus having more possession, but Inter being able to get out quickly and cause a lot of problems on the counterattack. And I think this half we've seen a lot more of both the teams being able to get behind the ball, slowing the pace down, and not really finding that penetrating ball that causes defense defenders trouble. These two teams have plenty of work to do in about maybe three weeks, a little bit less, to get it done. Before the season starts officially right side of the field maybe one more opportunity before penalties but the ball's not played across and instead it's Juventus taking it that was going to do it we're at 90 one one is your score and that means penalty kicks to determine a winner who finishes in seven who finishes in eight the last place either of these teams thought they'd be fighting for well, I think they'll be happy that they don't have to play <laughs> Extra time. We're 215 minutes after the preseason they've had have so many games. We'll at least get a winner. Penalty kicks when we return, even at one. We'll have a winner when we come back between Juventus and Inter Milan. determine a winner in this seventh place game after a 1-1 draw. Juventus were involved in penalty kicks, lost on penalty kicks to Everton 6-5. So that was an interesting game. Like everybody was scoring. They and missed. maybe the same in this. You wouldn't you wouldn't think Pula would do, be the one that missed. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they were very composed. They picked the, the right spots. And here are two teams that are very tired and fatigued. Now it's about getting your focus and making sure you, 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 you go through the right thought process and the right actions. Do you think, Brian, at a certain point, if you look down the field, I could see it in 88th minute maybe, but did you see it any sooner that they were going for penalties? 
you know, you got, you got that feeling because the, the whole second half didn't really have that punch that the first half had, where players were getting uh, forward a lot quicker. I think Inner was probably the more adventurous in that sense, trying to catch him on the counter, but Juve shape, they really get back a lot quicker than they did a few times in the first half. So, um, I'm with you. I think you got to the 80th minute mark, and there was, you could see the, not only the pace of the game had gone, but the, the thought process was, all right, let's not make a mistake here. And we accept penalty kicks. Uh, Jovinko is going to go first. Number 12, Jovinko. The chance to give his team the lead. Always like to have a very good penalty kick taker go first. And you hear coach said, most will say, good one going first and definitely last if it, if it gets to last. Doesn't right. always get there. Right. Yeah. The thought process I think most people are in is your first two kickers. Yep. First one for sure. Second one, yes. And then your know, three and four could be the ones you're not so sure about. And the fifth one it has to be the, the next best. Chirvinko. And who has the best nerves. <laughs> Chirvinko versus Carnizo. Chance to put you about this ahead. Slow steps up. Big save. Big set, right away. That sets the tone for Carrizo. Certainly a different start for Juventus. Carrizo, patient, goes and then just at a perfect height for him. You can see it's a good, strong hand, but very easy save. Do you think of probably pick that side, just stuck with it, and just too close to the goalkeeper. Guarin will go next. You see what a powerful shot he has had from distance. Much closer now. 12 yards away. There's two opportunities today. He didn't really strike it that hard. He'll need it here. For Inter, Guarin, another save. Wow. I just gave you the early result, 6-5 <laughs> in penalties, and we've got two saves, not misses, but saves. And yeah, and this one is, is a much better save. The first one was a great save, but this one, he's might be moving just a little bit early, but Guarin had put that much closer to the post than... Giovinco did. Marquisio will go next for Juventus. Round two of the penalties. Stepping up and he makes it look easy. Marquisio gives Juventus the lead. Well, that was tricky. The run up was tricky and the way he came across the ball was. Really nice, confusing. You can see he comes across it. And when you first whip your leg like that, you think he's got to bend it. But he goes with power and sort of just slice off the top of his foot. Ranocchia will go next. We're in that captain's armband after replacing Cambiasso. Chance to draw level. At the end of round two. Stepping up. And that was even easier. With the goalkeeper going one way, it's 1-1. One, one. Well, the writing seems to be very similar, doesn't it? Mm. That one not needing near as much pace. But Pinocchio does well to send the goalkeeper the wrong way. Places it with pace. More placement than pace, but all they needed to do is put that on frame on that side and it was in. It's supposed to be Lorente, who's up next. scores. Now they're clicking. Well, that's a great, great penalty. You can see right there, Carrizo guesses correctly, but the pace and the fact that it was low made it very difficult for Carrizo to get down and get there. Next shooter will be Alvarez. Terrific game for him. Scored the first goal. Has a chance to pull his team level again on penalties in round three. Against Storari. He's got that great left foot. Alvarez takes it and makes it 2-2. Two -two. Well, we're seeing some high-quality penalty kicks here. Ricky just a slow start. Gets that stutter step going. And Storari does really well to get out there. Try 
tries to get that top hand up and over. Can't get it high enough and pace takes it in. Pierlo is next. Versus Carrizo. He's taken many of these throughout his career at all levels. Andre Pierlo steps up and scores with precision. So that's exactly right. Lead. He wasn't going to miss this one, was he? No, no messing about. Picked his side and went there with pure finishing power. Great placement on it. The reason goes the right way, but just can't get out there quick enough. Icardi goes next to try to equalize yet again. Second half sub. Legs won't be as tired as some of the other players. Steps up, looks, and scores. Well, we've seen a few cheeky penalty kicks in this tournament so far. and That's one of them. That is one of them. And that's a dangerous one because when you're chipping and you don't get it high. And I know both keepers, the both keepers have been moving. But you got to at least get it up and over, possibly that, that dragging back foot. But he hit it slow enough that it really didn't matter. Vidal, who scored earlier on a penalty kick during the run of play, during the game itself. I always find now this difficult. JP, if you've already, already scored taken, a pedal, yes. You have to be ultra confident. Make sure that you don't think about any mind stuff. It's 3-3, three, three, and he does score. So it's 4-3. And the game could be won right here on a miss. Or we go and again, yes, again and again and again and again. We've seen some high quality finishing at penalty kicks here. Perfect placement, keeps it low. Carrizo tried to get there, he almost did, and it looked like if it just been a little higher, he probably would have. Belfadil goes next. If he makes it, we'll go at least another round. If he doesn't, we will have a winner. It'll be Juventus. Belfadil steps up, shoots it, and we're going more. So it's 4-4 after five rounds. It's an exhibition of penalty kick yeah. taken. We continue on. Right side, left side, low, slow, doesn't matter. Well taken by Pelfano there. So another group of kickers, potentially. Bana will take this next one. Chance to put his team on top. Round six. Magbana is ready. Stepping out. Love puts it. And he scores. 5-4. Juventus. Well, that had to be perfect. Carrizo went the right way. He went a little bit early. But for a big center back, this is just perfectly taken. Pace, bending. Look at that. Right in the side netting. like a long walk to the penalty spot for one more for Olsen Danish under 20 international could extend the game or end the game on a loss for his side with a miss Olsen steps up and he scores ah, give the kids some credit he <laughs> heard a in the crowd you didn't get a chance to see it, but he turned around and waved his hands up like, yeah, huh, yeah, what? But there you go. That's a, that's a great down-the-middle penalty kick. High enough that that dragging leg can't, can't get up there, and there you see that. Oh, yeah, I got something. That's a confident kid. Uh-huh. Caceres goes next. Round seven. Five-five is your score. Martin Caceres steps up. Scores easily. Well, the only misses were in round one. Everybody else has scored. They're taking them confidently. Now they're seeing the goalkeeper move a little bit. Actually, his head's down the whole way. He was going there the whole time and lowing in, lowing in the corner. One more try here in round seven. Steps up and he puts 
it in calmly again. 6-6. Six, six. Get ready for round eight. We might get to the goalkeeper's way this is going. Andreoli just places it high. It's a little close to the goalkeeper if he goes the right way, but he does it. But sorry, they're having a little giggle. Chiellini goes next in round eight. Score even at six, stutter step. Oh, seven, six. Well, if I'm Carrizo, I am just amazed that I've gone this that many sides the right way that many times. I just haven't been able to get my hand to it. He's close. He, He's very it, close. It's all about the quality of these penalty kicks have been exceptional. Almost everyone that has gone that side has been side netting with pace. Yep. Herrera's next. Not necessarily last. Especially if he scores. Herrera steps up and does score. 7-7 seven, seven after round eight. Headed for round number nine. It's a penalty okay. kick clinic. Yep. Right now. Just confident. Worked up. Head down the whole way. Knows where he's going. Kept it low. Didn't matter. Goalkeeper went the wrong way, but very confident penalty kick so far. Ticelli is next. Second half sub for Juventus. Stepping up. And again, the goalkeeper came so close, but could not get his fingertips on it. 8-7. Well, if I'm him, I'm, I'm not diving out so far, because you can see on these dives, like, great penalty kick again. But... And that one, it looked like actually he didn't go out as far, but he's been diving out far, and I, I think with the pace of the ball, he gets he can't get out there quick enough. Such a precise kick. Another try for Inter Milan to extend this game. And believe me, he's doing everything right because normally you're going to save it because the pace of the ball is a lot slow. But all the pace, all the ball, all the balls have been hit very solidly, and he just hasn't been able to get there. Up to Jonathan to extend the night or end the night. Stepping up, looking, and he scores. I'm ready to go to another sheet of paper. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting ready for the tenth round. Oh, this one's not near as well taken, but again, doesn't matter because it's going the wrong way. That's how he's getting his work in for his team on penalties, that's for sure. Isla is next. Hasn't been a miss since round one. And the goalkeeper's made saves. Isla steps up. There's the save. There it is from Carrizo. He got one. He now, did. Now what happens? And that's, again, he, he stuck with it. Read it correctly. He's been all over it. And that time it's a little less pacey. And it's a little closer to the goalie. He's out. Does everything right. Just it's going to be the goalkeeper, Carrizo, who's going to take away. it. He's going to take it for a chance to win it for his team. Goalkeeper versus goalkeeper. Carrizo can end the night for Inter Milan. And he does. Inter Milan win it over Juventus in penalties. He made two saves and scores the game winner. And he was all over it. I mean, he definitely was the star of the penalty kicks, but just 